Functions are arguably one of the most important concepts in the entirety of JavaScript. You'll use them literally everywhere, and they're one of the core building blocks of JavaScript, but learning functions can be quite difficult, especially if you're just getting started with JavaScript. So in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly how functions work, what they can do, the different ways you can use them, and why you would even want to use them in the first place. Also, this entire video is based on a similar video that I have in my JavaScript Simplified course. This course is perfect if you're a beginner JavaScript developer because it takes you from knowing absolutely nothing about JavaScript all the way up to being an intermediate JavaScript developer with things like testing, security, and clean code. I highly recommend checking out this course. It's gonna be linked down in the description for you. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today we're gonna to be talking about functions. So let's say I have some code that just console logs out the text high, and then I have a bunch of other code somewhere in the middle, and then finally somewhere else I'm console logging out high again. You can see my code works fine, it says high, it says high again, and all the code in the middle is running just fine if I had some code there to run. But what happens if I wanna change this console log high to say hello? Well, I need to change it to hello here, Okay, now I need to change it to hello down here. So I had to change my code in two different places. Essentially, I know for a fact that this console log that says hello and this one on the bottom are always going to be exactly the same and I want them to do the exact same thing every single time I call them. But right now they're copied between different places and every time I change one, I need to make sure I update the other one. This is the perfect use case for a function because a function in JavaScript, all it does is it takes some type of logic, so console logging hello too, and it just puts that inside of a particular piece of code that you can run whenever you want, and it's always going to do the same thing every single time. So let me show you really quickly how you would create a function to do this little bit of a log. So to create a function, you just need to type the keyword function, and you'll know you've done this correctly if in your editor, it'll probably turn a different color. In my example, it turns blue, but it could be any color for your particular editor. Then you need to give your function a name. So just hit space, give it a name. We'll call this one say hi. Now the final step you need to do is you need to close this off with parentheses. So you put an open and a closing parenthesis, and then finally some open and closing curly braces. So what we have here again is we have the keyword function, we have a name for our function, and then functions can actually take arguments and parameters inside of them. So you can like pass code to a function. In our case, we're not dealing with that. And that's why our parentheses here are completely blank. And for now that's perfectly okay. Then the final thing we have is these open and closing curly braces. Everything between these curly braces is going to be the code that gets executed in your function. So everything we put inside of here, all of this gets executed every time we call our say hi function. So what I'm gonna do in here is I'm just gonna console log hi. And if I save my code, you'll notice nothing gets printed on the right hand side of my screen, but we also have no errors at all. So this code is working, but it's not doing anything. And that's because by default, when you create a function, which is what we've done here, the function just stores some code to execute later. It doesn't do anything, it doesn't run any code, it's just saying, hey, I have this function called say hi, and when you call it, I'm going to run all the code inside these curly brackets, but for now, I'm not going to do anything until you tell me to do something. So let's talk about how we actually call a function. To call a function, all you do is you type out the name of the function, in our case, say hi, and then you again use parentheses. So open and close the parentheses, that's how you tell your function you want to call it. So we're saying call the say hi function and pass absolutely nothing to it because we didn't put anything inside of our parentheses here. Now if I run this, you can see it prints out hi because what's happening is it creates our function right here, then later in our code, we're calling that function and when you call the function, it just goes into these curly brackets and runs all the code inside of them and that's all that happens. If we run this function a second time, you'll see it prints out hi twice. And if I change this to hello, I only have to change it in one place and it updates both of the functions that are being called. That's again, one of the huge benefits for functions because you can take logic and code that you're using all over the place, put it in one place, and then you can reuse it and change it easily all in one place. Now, up until this point, all we've done is create a very basic function that doesn't take any arguments and just does whatever we tell it to. We can, if we want, make this have multiple lines. So this could say, hello and bye. And now you can see when we call this, it's going to say, hello, and then it's going to say bye. So you can have as many lines of code as you want in here as long as they're between these curly braces. What happens if you wanna pass code to a function? Let's in our case, try to create a sum function. So we're gonna say a function, and we're gonna call it sum. We're gonna do those opening and closing parentheses and opening and closing curly brackets, but I wanna pass some code to our sum function. All you need to do is just give it a name, whatever you want. You could call it anything you want. In our case, we'll call it A and we'll call it B because we wanna add the numbers A and B together. When you pass different variables inside of a function like this, you just need to separate them by a comma. That's all it takes. You don't even need this space. I just put it for readability purposes. And now we're passing in a variable called A and a variable called B. And I just wanna log out adding those two variables together. So I'm just gonna log out whatever A plus B is. 
And you'll notice before I added A plus B, these were kind of dark gray color in my editor. And when I add A plus B, they become a more bright color. That's just my editor telling me that before I wasn't using these variables and now I am using these variables. So now to call this function, we just type sum and we put the opening and closing brackets here, opening and closing parentheses, but now we also need to pass it a value. So let's pass it the values one and two, again, separated by a comma. If I save, you can see it logs out three because it's just adding one and two, which is what I pass into here. So when you have parameters and arguments inside of a function that you can pass between them, you'll notice that whatever the first thing you pass to the function is, is just defined as this first variable here. So that is a, you can see if I console.log a, and I save this, you can see it prints out one. If I change this to console log B, you can see it prints out two because whatever your second value is here corresponds to the second value here. So they directly map to each other one to one into wherever they're going. So whatever you put here gets put into this variable, whatever you put here gets put into this variable B here. It's almost exactly the same thing as if you just said like const A equals one, const B equals two, and then you copy whatever code is inside this function and paste it down below. That's the exact same thing that happens when we run sum one and two. So let's get rid of all that code, bring it back to what we had here. Now what happens though if we don't pass a variable for B? So I'm just gonna console log A and B. So you can see it prints out one and two. But what happens if I don't pass anything for our second value? If I save, you notice it prints out undefined and it doesn't actually throw any errors. JavaScript is a bit unique when it comes to functions in that it doesn't throw any errors if you don't pass enough arguments, it just sets all the arguments you don't pass to undefined. So if I pass nothing, you'll notice both A and B are set to undefined because I didn't pass anything at all for them. So anytime you leave off some variables that you're trying to pass to your function, it'll always just set them to undefined. So that's really important to understand. Now, the final thing I wanna talk about with functions is how you actually get data out of a function. Because up until this point, all we've been doing is logging out some information to the screen, but we haven't been returning any data to be used. So instead of just logging out A plus B, I wanna return A plus B so I can use it later. And to do that, you use the return keyword. So you just type in the return keyword. If you've done it correctly, it'll turn a color in your editor and then you just pass whatever you wanna return. So I could just say here, sum equals A plus B, and then I can return our sum down here, and that's going to work just fine. Or I can have what I had before, where it's just inline A plus B. So now whatever A plus B is, is going to be returned from my function. So again, let's pass in one and two, and when we save, you'll notice nothing's logged out, which is great, but our sum is being printed out here. So we have our actual sum value, which is right here. We'll just call it value, make it a little bit easier to read. And I can console.log our value, and now you'll notice it prints out three. So when you use the return keyword, what essentially happens is it takes whatever that value is you're returning, and it puts it inside the variable of that function. So it just comes out of the function. This is really powerful, and one of the main use cases for a function is getting some other data from that function. It's gonna do a bunch of stuff and then spit out some data for you. So all the time, you're gonna see code like this where you set a value based on the result of a specific function. Another interesting thing about this return keyword is it makes sure no code runs after it. So we can just say console.log never will run and we save you'll notice this never gets printed out it's even kind of grayed out inside of my editor and that's because every single time whenever you run return the function immediately exits out nothing else afterwards is ever going to be run this is actually really useful and people will use this to exit out of functions early if there's like an error of some form now something really neat that you may have actually picked up on this video is that console.log is actually a function on its own we just change this back here to high you'll notice that this works just like a normal function we're calling this log function with our parentheses and we're passing it a specific value. And console.log is really cool because that's what it is. It's just a function that takes in some values. And there's lots of functions built into JavaScript that you've probably already used before, but this is probably the one you've used the most and you may not have even realized that this itself is a specific function. So that's why it's really important in JavaScript to make sure you understand the fundamentals of what is going on because if you do, it makes all these magical seeming things like console.log much simpler to understand because really it's just a function, that's all it is. So if you're interested in actually learning those building blocks of JavaScript and making sure you understand the core concepts so that you can really truly understand JavaScript, I highly recommend my JavaScript Simplified course. It's going to be linked in the description of this video and it takes you from knowing absolutely nothing about JavaScript all the way to being an intermediate developer with skills far past what I knew when I landed my first dev job. So with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.